Now then, being able to dive isn't exactly a critical swim skill, unless of course you're planning on doing some swim racing, but let's be honest, it looks pretty damn cool and can be quite a valuable skill to have, although unfortunately it can be quite hard to master. So if you fancy starting your swims in style or just simply a little bit faster, keep watching because we've got some tips on how to dive. All right, the dive. I have to be honest, it's not something I've practiced that much. Uh, I think I can count on one hand all the times I've started a triathlon with a dive start, uh, but it's still, it's a cool skill to have and a really nice way to start the uh, swim session with a nice graceful dive into the water. Do you call your dives graceful? <laughs> they look graceful in my head. <laughs> Whereas on the other <laughs> hand, I've done loads. I started out as a swimmer, so yeah, diving was kind of what I did as a kid for well, years. Definitely Mark's expertise then. Uh, so I'll try and take you through some of the skills and Mark will then demonstrate it in the water behind us. Go yeah? back and remember. <laughs> right, well first things first, you need to prepare for the dive. And that means making sure those goggle straps are nice and tight. What you don't want to happen is as you dive in, uh, your goggles end up around your mouth because uh, that's not a nice way to start your swim. In fact, you don't even want your goggles to slip a tiny bit and let in that flood of water. It's, uh, it's very uncomfortable and not the way to start your swim. If you have tightened up your goggles, uh, and they're still slipping, then you can, what you can do is try and put them underneath your swim cap. The swim cap will obviously then help keep those goggles in place as you dive in. Uh, you do want your goggle straps nice and tight, but not so tight that you get out the pool looking like a raccoon. Yeah, and then also for mostly the men, but I guess also the women wearing a two-piece suit, make sure that drawstring is nice and tight. <laughs> and then choose your starting position wisely. You want to make sure you start low on deck level rather than heading confidently straight for that start block. Build that confidence up gradually because that start block is a lot higher than it looks. Yeah, so we're gonna build up your dive or, or rather break down your dive so that you know what to do as you get to the race start dive. We're gonna start nice and gently on the start. Even if you feel like you uh, got your dive waxed, we'd suggest you go through all these steps one by one because you might pick up a error that you've been making for years, or you might just find you can smooth out your dive a little bit by starting at the beginning. Right then, let's get this show on the road. I'm gonna be using James as our guinea pig today to showcase the dive for us. We're starting with nice level decking. If you can do the same, that's brilliant. Just allow you to build that confidence up gradually. So then James, I want you to step forwards to the edge of the pool and hook your toes over the edge. I want your feet around shoulder width apart. So you've got a nice stable base beneath you. Now then, I want you to put your hands up above your head into a nice streamlined position. Then start bending back from the hips and also bending the knees to around 120 degrees. Great, and now start rocking ever so slowly forwards, allowing gravity to take you. And then at the last moment, just put a little pop in, extend the legs. Voila. If you do find this intimidating, you can start, as you may have seen kids starting to learn the dive, by sitting on the poolside, arms up straight above their head, and then rolling forward into the pool, hands first. Back to the dive though, you're now airborne, and if you've leaned far enough forward and timed your little hop well, you should now be heading hands first into the water. It's important to keep the position all the way through the dive with your arms fully extended above your head, hands together, chin tucked down, and legs straight. For your entry into the water, it's helpful to think of an invisible ring or hoop on the surface through which your whole body needs to pass. If you find yourself belly flopping or face flopping, you probably didn't rock far enough forward before you jumped. Practice this over and over until you can repeatedly do it smoothly and are confident in it. And then we can move you on to the dive start or race start dive. Right, we're gonna take things up a level now, literally. We're gonna go a little bit higher and further away from the water if your pool has the option to do this. I'd suggest starting and continuing with that basic dive that we have just practiced. 
because don't underestimate, just being that little bit further away from the water can mess with your timing a bit. So just use this to get used to the timing and making sure that your hands enter the water first rather than belly flopping. But now let's move on to the proper dive. Now we have a couple of options here. We can start with the traditional dive where we have your legs are in the same kind of position, the same bend in them, but obviously your hands or arms are gonna be down between your feet or on either side. And then you want to be looking down and through and behind yourself, through your legs. And then as we did before, we're gonna start rocking forwards. And as you start to feel yourself falling at the last moment, we wanna put a little hop in while simultaneously bringing the hands forward into a nice streamlined position whilst keeping that chin tucked down whilst you enter. Timing is everything in getting the dive right too late and you'll find yourself diving downward and going really deep and losing all your momentum. Jumping too early or not pushing hard enough with your legs and you'll not have the arc in your body where your hands lead your head and your head leads your hips through the water and you'll probably find yourself belly flopping. Well, if all's going well, you have done a dive, but now we're gonna take it up another level onto the start block or race blocks. Again, I would suggest just continuing with that traditional dive with your feet either side of one another and hands placed either down between those feet or on either side. And just practice that through numerous times to build up your confidence. Voila. And if you find yourself feeling really happy and confident with that, why not try out the track start by placing one foot in front of the other? You may even find on some start blocks that they have a little kick plate at the back that you can position and move to your preference and put that rear foot onto to get a little bit more power into that dive and see which one you prefer. But your dive doesn't end when you hit the water. We still have a full underwater phase to the dive and your body position and entry speed makes a huge difference on how effective your dive is. And even just the smallest adjustments can have a massive effect on how well you maintain your speed and also how far that you travel. Now you may have seen elite swimmers using the full legal 15 meters underwater, but that doesn't mean that you need to do the same. It doesn't mean that you're gonna go faster by going further underwater, but coming up gasping for air. It's far better and you'll find it far faster to go as far as you feel comfortable and keep that breath under control. And as you enter the water, concentrate on staying as streamlined as possible for as long as possible. Begin kicking as you start to slow down, either a small freestyle kick or a strong butterfly kick. And begin that first stroke as you begin to surface from the water. It can take some time, so practice getting the timing of that first stroke right. Too early and you won't be able to lift your arm out of the water for the recovery. And too late and you'll lose all that momentum from the dive and find that you have to work really hard to get going again. But it is easy to feel when you have got this just right, so just keep practicing until you do. Finally, as we mentioned earlier, you might choose to use the track start dive. This is useful if you're diving for a race or triathlon, it's easier to hold the start position and begin the dive immediately at the gun, whereas the traditional dive requires you to rock forward. It is, however, mostly the same. You simply keep one foot back while the stronger leg is forward with the toes over the block. Then on the start signal, push forward with both legs into the same streamlined dive position and the rest of the dive is the same. Without the feel of gravity dictating your dive angle, like the traditional dive start, it is a little harder and will take some more practice to get your start angle perfect for that smooth water entry. And that's it for the dive start. Done. Was that elegant and graceful? Yes. Yeah, I think we'll maybe just we'll keep practicing, have fun with it. Yeah. I mean, it may not be the most critical skill, especially if you're a triathlete, you may not even ever do a pontoon start or a race start. But heck, it's a cool skill to have, isn't it? 
Does even if it's just your swim exactly yeah. even if it's just the start of each of your swim or training sessions well i hope you guys have enjoyed today's video and you've gain some tips from this and you're able to dive by the end of the video. If so, please do give this a thumbs up, give it a like, and don't forget to subscribe down below.